Afro State is probably Faust's best mechanic as it not only gives you better options on offense as well as increases your ability to apply pressure, it also alters the way certain buttons work for Faust, giving you better options with them and just making them better in general. It also allows you to counter certain, let's say, abusable mechanics that a lot of other players use against Faust, 6P being a very good example of this. This video might be fairly long, I don't know if I'll break it up into two bits yet, one just covering the mechanics of Afro and then another covering the combo strings and things like that, we'll see, I don't know yet. But for starters, I will cover the mechanics and how Afro State affects Faust and how it affects your opponent. I will break it down starting with the easiest first and then go on to more complex stuff later. So we'll start with the obvious one and that is Afro State massively improves how effective 5k is. 5k on most if not all characters will whiff on crouching opponents which makes it very 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 risky to use against most characters because it's very easy to whiff punish. But if you land snip 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 first, all of a sudden you can't crouch block it anymore, it hits. This is great because 5k will now become your go-to pressure button. It has 1 frame extra startup than 5p, so it's an 8 frame startup. It has 8 active frames, which is twice that of 5p. It has the exact same amount of recovery frames at 8, and it is minus 2 on block, just like 5p. So basically, you're trading 1 extra frame of startup for a move with twice as many active frames and better range and better galling options because from 5k you get access to low overhead mix. Instant low overhead mix, my I add. So although 5k does become your best button against opponents when they're in Afro state, there are certain characters it won't work against. Giovanna, Jacko and Faust can all low profile the 5k even in Afro state, so be careful when you use it against them. This one's an obvious one, all Faust players will know this, but I thought I'd just cover it. You can use Afro Explosion to extend combos beyond their normal limit, allowing for more damage, more corner carry, a wide variety of more situational stuff. I'll show a few examples, I'm not going to show a lot at the minute, I'm just trying to cover the basics before I get onto the more advanced stuff. But I think that's all the basics of what you can get from Afro, so we'll start going into some of the more advanced stuff. Thanks to 5k being jump cancelable, when your opponent is in the afro state you get access to instant low overhead mix. If the overhead connects you can convert off of it freely, no meter required, and if the low connects it causes a hard knockdown which resets the situation and allows you to re redo it again basically. You can do it over and over and over again until it hits or until the afro is gone. Jump dust is unsafe on block, but you can special cancel it into mix and into love. So you have options there, if you have meter you can also RC it and do stuff that way. Same with the 2D hard knockdown, if you have meter you can RC it and convert off of it that way. But if you want to be safe just do 5k 2D because 2D is minus 4 on block so most characters can't punish it. When your opponent stands up do 5k 2D again and make them guess are you doing low or are you doing overhead. One of the big weaknesses Faust has right now is how easy it is to counter a lot of his medium range options. So a fast slash, because it's got a lot of recovery, 2H has a lot of recovery, but Thrust in particular is very easy to counter because it has a 26 frame startup, which means your opponent can reactively 6P it and use the invulnerability frames of 6P to basically just beat out your thrust every single time on reaction from max range. It's a really frustrating thing that Faust players have to deal with. 
but a thing a lot of Faust players take advantage of, and I don't think they actually know that they're doing it, is that when your opponent is in Afro state, the Afro on the opponent negates the invulnerability frames of 6P. They're still technically invulnerable, but the invulnerability state doesn't apply to the Afro, so you can hit people out of invulnerable moves thanks to the Afro. The reason Thrust is so easily countered with 6P is that even if your opponent times it late, the invulnerability frames will stop him from getting hit by the Thrust, giving him the extra time he needs for the hit to come out and hit you out of Thrust. But because of the Afro state, if your opponent times it wrong, he won't have the invulnerability frames thanks to the Afro. You basically hit the Afro and not the opponent. Thanks to the Afro giving your opponent a herd box, they can no longer rely on just 6p, they have to time it right, otherwise you can hit them out of the 6p. They're still technically invulnerable, but the Afro state counters it. And just as a side note, 6p can still hit you out of thrust if they time it correctly, but if they mistime it, they can't rely on the invulnerability frames anymore. This situation is especially noticeable with thrust, but it doesn't just apply to thrust, it applies to any button that your opponent tries to counter with 6p, if they mistime the 6p and just rely on the invulnerability frames, they have to time it right now that they're in the Afro state. This severely reduces the effectiveness of 6p in a lot of different situations. I'll only show the thrust situation because there's so many situations this applies to. The video will be 30 minutes long and just showing them, but just note that the Afro state is a very good counter to 6p and other invulnerable moves. Remember, you don't always have to go for the Afro Ignite immediately. The Afro lasts for 10 hits or approximately 10 seconds. So you can use it just to apply pressure and just use the fear of igniting the Afro and getting a free conversion from it to condition your opponent to block whatever pressure you apply. There's a lot of pressure and a lot of block strings you can do, especially using 5k resets because you have instant low overheads from it that you can get away with purely because of how afraid your opponent might be of the afro so use it to your advantage don't always go for the ignite out the gate try and do it later and then once you've ignited the afro you can use it again to reapply the pressure because once the afro has been ignited it will last for another approximately two to three seconds so you can extend the duration of the afro even further and the amount of hits your opponent has to block from 10 to I don't know what, 12, 13, so you can get more pressure from it if you don't ignite it immediately. I'll show some examples where you don't ignite the afro immediately, but you use the threat of igniting the afro immediately to condition your opponent to block the pressure, and you can keep it going and going and going until you eventually do ignite it, and then apply even more pressure on top of that. Always keep of note as well that when you're doing these resets and these block things, you can always stop them, run in and do another command grab and reset the afro and reset this pressure scenario and go back into block strings that you're using and keep this pressure going and you can actually really start to build some risk gauge with this. It's a very powerful tool that a lot of people want to utilize. I do this myself. I'm not blaming anybody for doing it. Hopefully from this you can get some ideas as to what kind of pressure you can apply and what kind of block strings you can do, what kind of resets you can do. And obviously at any point during this you can ignite the afro and use that to condition your opponent even further to not hit buttons because they're not going to want to hit it when it's on fire because of the explosion that's going to happen. I'm not going to show a massive amount of options, this is just kind of to get your brain working and kind of figure out for yourself what you can do. I will do another demonstration video after this showing some more of this stuff off, but it's a very, very powerful tool. Becoming accustomed to how long the Afro stays when it is ignited, as well as how many buttons or what combo strings you can get in that duration 
can lead to some very interesting situations as you're able to use the Afro detonate to make unsafe strings safe, allowing for, once again, similar to the hammer situation, free resets where under normal circumstances you wouldn't get them, which is very, very good. Because Afro extends the herd box upwards, it also makes jump ins way easier and way more consistent. Jump slash, jump heavy slash will whiff far less frequently than what it normally would, making jump ins a far more viable and useful option for trying to get in. And again, it negates the invulnerability frames of 6P, so if they try to anti-air you with 6P, unless they time it really, really well or you make a mistake, it's nowhere near as effective thanks to Afro State. One good thing you can do after landing the command grab is do a safe jump in which can't be reversaled. This is especially good because if you come up against an opponent like Kai or Saul or Chip who has mateless reversals you can use this to great effect against them. But because of the way Faust's air dash works, if you're low enough to the ground when you do it, it will leave you plus on block, allowing you to continue your pressure. Because of this, it's a very good option to do after you land command grab because it's jump safe if you can get the timing right and it gives you plus frames, allowing you quite a variety of options that you can go from here, whether you want to go into lows, want to go into overheads, whether you want to run in and go for another throw or a command grab, whether you want to fish for count hits. It's a very, very good offensive tool to use after command grab. It might even be optimal, considering the amount of options you get from it and the pressure allows you to apply. The timing on the jump in is kind of finicky, but if you can get used to it, it's by far away probably your best option to go with after you land a command grab. Now that plus frames and resets are easier to get thanks to Afro State, you can use the plus frames and reset opportunities to fish for counter hits. To keep this video short, I think I'll just show two as a quick example. But just know there are way more situations where you can fish for counter hits when your opponent is in Afro State, not just the ones I'm showing right now. This is just to show that you have some low overhead options that can benefit from the delayed Afro detonate. I need to experiment a little bit more with this as well as the 50-50 mix-up situation you can get from it as well that you'll see in a moment. So I won't have many examples of it, but I thought I would just show it and let you know that it is an option that you can do. And maybe you can go into the dojo, mess around and find some stuff of your own. I'll probably show more of this stuff later on in a separate video once I've found more situations you can use it in. Another interesting trick I thought I'd quickly mention is with the Ignited Afro, if you time the punch or kick version of Scarecrow with the delayed Afro detonate, you can create cross-ups. If it's timed perfectly, you can't get thrown out of it either. There's no telltale signs as to whether you're doing the punch or kick version of Scarecrow, your opponent just has to make a guess and switch their block direction according to whatever version they think you're going to do. I've been making this video now for over a week and it's taken me multiple recording sessions to do it so I'm kind of paranoid I've left something out. If I have left anything out I will put it in the comments. If there's anything in particular you would like to know about Faust, leave it in the comments and I might be able to make a video on it just to help you out. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching.